Look, I understand why they're doing all this protesting over in the USA, but we didn't even have slavery in Britain. You couldn't even be a slave in Britain, so we don't need to protest all this stuff. Right? Wrong. In fact, more than wrong, that's bullcrap. And I'm going to prove it. And I'm going to prove it with the most archaeologically important evidence known to man. Gravestones. And also the Runaway Slaves in Britain Index, which you should totally check out. We're going for a walk. Come on. Welcome to the Royal Mile in Edinburgh, just behind me is St Giles's Cathedral, there it is, looking all pretty and gothic and nice. And not many people know that there was originally a prison just here, well, not here, here, sort of over there. I'll go and stand on it, I'll go and stand. In 1756, an enslaved man called James Montgomery was brought here after running away from a slave ship that was leaving Port Glasgow to take him over to Virginia, where he'd probably have worked in the tobacco plantations. Montgomery was bought in 1750 in Fredericksburg in Virginia by a Scotsman called Snedden. He paid £56, 12 shillings and sixpence for the man and brought him back over to Ayrshire, where he worked for the next six years. In 1756, he decided that it was time to get baptised, so he ran and got baptised by a man called Dr John Witherspoon. A Witherspoon was actually involved in the American Declaration of Independence, but who cares, that's not what this is about. And when Snedden found out about this, he forced James onto a slave ship, the one that I talked about just a minute ago, to get him back over to Virginia, where there'd be much less chance of him escaping. Thankfully, James managed to run here, to Edinburgh. Now, Snedden put out a newspaper advert, a runaway slave ad, the kind of thing that you normally associate with American slavery, and it worked. Montgomery was found, arrested, and brought here to the Tollbooth prison. James decided that he was going to sue for his freedom. Because he was baptised, that made him a Christian, and he was, quote, by his Christian religion, liberate. Now, the theory was that when you were a Christian in Britain in the 18th century, by law, you couldn't be owned by another human being. You had possession of your own body, habeas corpus. Now, if James had survived, spoiler alert, he doesn't, he almost certainly would have won his freedom in the court of sessions, just to my left here. Unfortunately, after six months in prison, James Montgomery died from the horrible conditions in the toll booth, and he died a slave, just behind me. This is the last stop on our little walk around Edinburgh today. This is St Cuthbert's graveyard, but behind me is St John's churchyard. There's a churchyard next to a churchyard. Welcome to Edinburgh. And behind that wall over there is the only gravestone in Edinburgh to a woman born into slavery. And her name was Marvina Wells. <clears throat> Malvina was born in Grenada, into slavery, and came over to Scotland with the Macrae family. And she worked here for 70 plus years. So that's Scotland for you. I've given you a couple of enslaved people who lived and worked and died in Scotland in the 18th and 19th centuries. But what about the rest of the UK? Well, you can't get away from it either. <clears throat> There's a man uh, in Wales, quite a famous character from West Wales, called John Ustim Sin. And John Ustim Sin was born in the West Indies in the 18th century. He came over to Wales with the Wynne family of Crickieth in West Wales. And he died in Wales and is buried there with his wife, who was a local maid. He actually ran away from the house he was working in to marry his wife and was then given a job as a free man in the town that he had previously worked in as an enslaved person. There's obviously Scipio Africanus in Bristol and also in Wiltshire there's a grave of a woman called Myrtilla which speaks volumes. It simply says, a slave. It's pretty unequivocal. You can't actually deny that there were enslaved people living in Britain when we've got their gravestones here. So, there you go, there were no slaves in Scotland, there were no slaves in Britain. That's a lie. You don't erase history when you pull down the statues to the people who bought those people, who bought those men and women. You erase history when you forget that those men and women even existed.